Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here at this week's episode of the Market Monday on a Tuesday. For some of you, it will be out even on a Wednesday. Yeah, we're behind, had run into some technical difficulties yesterday as well. It's just crazy busy right now with some projects. So anyways, better late than never. At least that's my motto here at Rogue Deck Builder. I want to bring you this week's market episode, which is going to be talking about a new website that I found and more of just me speculating live here, going through the thought process of how I look at commander cards. This again, this 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 new website that I found out that I think will be a game changer as far as looking towards trends for the commander uh, cards that are coming out. So what I like to do with each new set is look at the legendary creatures. Almost every set has a card or a commander that spikes the price of all the cards that are contained in that particular commander. If we go back to like Hapatra or Nahab the Eternal or the Locust God or even recent ones like Tesa, it always seems like one set, the prices of the cards that are surrounding the most popular, or even the second most popular legendary creature, will go nuts. So for this time around, it's Feather. And I highly, highly suggest that if you are someone that likes to speculate, if you like to talk with others that uh, like to do the same, you should definitely just join my Patreon just for that reason. You will get access to our Rogue Market channel on Patreon. And this is one of the specs that we came up with as a crew, uh, the Mirrorwing Dragon. Mirrorwing Dragon was talked about a little bit in the circles for the cards that go in Feather, but it was actually pretty late to the party for spiking. We saw a bunch of cards in Feather go crazy with the Command Zone talking about cards that worked well. And Mirrorwing was just a little bit uh, slow behind. Uh, this is one we identified had had relatively low supply comparatively to more recent sets and had an incredibly low price. Uh, any Mythic that's around the dollar range, that's pretty much considered what we call bulk. And you can find even deals on those. So we, as a group, looked at Mirrorwing Dragon, looked at the supply. Uh, you can go over to like TCG Player or other places and, and like Card Kingdom and see what their supply is going for in those particular cards. It's pretty easy to gauge. And then you can basically deduce that this card, if it is adopted in a deck like Feather, is going to go up in value. So as a group, again, we, we were able to figure that out. There are only X amount of pages at this amount of price. And I wouldn't say that we necessarily orchestrated a buyout because this definitely people it was more than our group it took to actually get in on this. I think I bought 85 copies of Mirrorwing Dragon. I don't know how much my patrons bought of this particular card, but it's just a really good environment to collaborate together as far as not buyouts specifically because that buyouts don't work. There needs to be actual demand uh, beyond the buyouts for the, the buyouts to actually hold there. I, I can reference many buyouts in the past. Uh, there are a lot of reserve list cards that have just fallen flat. There have a lot of uh, cards like Seance that took a massive collaboration for people to try to buy it out. There are uh, cards that people thought were going to go up or thought that because of low supply uh, through other you know, you know uh, groups. I know there's a big Facebook group that tries to collaborate on these sort of things. They never work unless there is actual true demand. Because you got to think at the end of the day, people that actually invest in magic cards are going to want a place to sell them. So if there aren't the people that are actually scooping them out of the market, meaning they, they're going into decks, and why, why I specifically like commander players more than I like modern or standard players is it seems that once commander players purchase a purchase, it goes to a collection, it goes to a deck, and it doesn't go back in the market unless those players leave the game. Commander players, I think, are the most resilient to actually selling their decks. When they build a commander deck, they usually keep it and add another one. And that's why the average commander player, they start with one or two decks, and pretty soon, a year down the road, they have 12. Two years down the road, they have 20. We all know that guy that has 70-plus commander decks. There's one, at, there's multiple at my store, and I know of a lot of, uh, back in my days in Salt Lake City, I know a lot of them the, the, that are now even foiling out their, their, you know, their pet commander decks. And they, those are the type of people that start with a couple. So anyway, that's why I like Commander is once these cards get stripped from the supply, they don't re-enter. The only way to get Mirrorwing Dragon now down would be a reprint. So yes, the uh, powers that be at Wizards do follow the Commander format very, very closely, and they do reprint these cards. We've shown on EDH uh, Rec as kind of the source of there hasn't been a number one card out of a set uh, that has not been reprinted. And I mean, I think there's only a few exceptions. One is one is Journey into Nyx Mana Confluence hasn't had a reprint for whatever reason. 
And but the, the vast majority of other cards, even as soon back as as, as over the Gatewatch with the Zendikar Resurgence, have been reprinted because they do uh, keep an eye and they do reprint the cards out of uh, that are popular in Commander uh, quite frequently. So yeah, we do have to worry about re reprints, but we don't have to worry about the ebbs and flows that we often see with decks falling out of favor in Standard or rotating, or same thing with Modern when a better replacement comes or a, de a deck just comes to swallow up that meta share that another deck used to. I think that the modern is really, really awkward to invest in right now. First of all, the the London Mulligan is very, very awkward. We don't know how that's going to affect it. Uh, and also with Modern Horizons coming out, I also don't know what that's going to do to change the modern meta. So right now, Commander is my bread and butter. And I guess I've been rambling wrong enough. Let's just go on to this new site that I found out. And I, this is another way that it, it helps me get ahead is to start following the trends. Yes, there's tapped out. Yes, there's MTG Goldfish. Yes, there's a lot of other places that, that people create commander decks. But this one's just a really, uh, I think it's gonna be very popular in the future. So I'm gonna now, I'm gonna showcase it here and we're gonna actually look at decks that are built through this website. Now this is called Architect. So Architect, which is A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T dot com is a place where you can build a deck and then test out the deck you can sit you can basically just uh, uh gold fish it and see how well it works it will break down some stacks give you uh or stats get you deck stats and it will actually give you uh pricing from multiple sources so it's kind of like a one-stop shop uh for uh building decks and then also looking at other decks that other people have built so feather this was one of the first places that actually adopted Feather when it was spoiled and allowed people to build around it. And I think that this is also going to add sources to EDH Rec. Don't quote me on that. I'm not I'm not 100% sure on it. But with Feather, it was really, really cool to get ahead because we did have the Command Zone video that really started spiking the prices around Feather. But then you actually look at what people are coming up with. There's one thing to kind of theory craft when you see a spoiler card. I'm like, well, this card goes good with it. Well, this card goes good with it. But then to actually see what the masses are building, that helps you get ahead of the spikes. So this is Architect. And you can come over here and just view random decks, or you can come over here and on this decks and actually search for decks. So we've looked at Feather. Let's go ahead and look at Nahab now. I think Nahab will be the honorary second best uh, because there aren't a lot of legendary creatures out of the new set. Of course, it's it's mainly Planeswalkers that are out of War of the Spark, but we do have Nahab that's also a legendary creature. Now, Nahab's quite interesting as a commander. Uh, it, it might not replace how Nahab uh, out of uh our devastation works i think this one is interesting enough to make it a a deck out of so this is the dreadlord champion so we're just going to kind of look at a few of these decks and see exactly how they're building them so here is is nahab dreadlord uh champion which has whenever nahab dreadlord champion deals combat damage to a player or a planeswalker you may discard any number of cards if you do draw that many cards and add that much mana or add that much red mana until and until end of turn you don't lose this mana as steps and 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 Phases end. So it's very similar to the other Nahab, except that it is allowing you some card draw and deck manipulation. So I think it does work different than the old school Nahab where you just want to dish out a bunch of damage. I'm not quite sure some of these decks are building this properly. I think that you want to build this deck as like a, a value mid-range deck uh, that has a lot of combo pieces uh, with utilizing the graveyard. So I actually like this in like a Derevi type style deck where you're utilizing ways to get stuff back from the graveyard. I think that's the way it's going to eventually go. But it's always nice to kind of look at these decks and have a nice, uh, where they've been able to have different categories of the cards. Like I, I do prefer this over tapped out. I do prefer this over other ones I've seen because it's just right here in kind of deck form. You can mess around with it. You can kind of see the prices and go from there. So most of the decks with Nahab, I assume are going to have some sort of graveyard recursion uh, as you are easy just to throw things in the graveyard. This particular deck does look like it's more based upon ramp. There are a lot of ramp spills uh, in the form of the artifacts. They're also using Nahab Dreadlord Champion as a ramp spell so the usual suspects of this deck the lightning greaves um i'm surprised that this deck isn't isn't going for more than just lightning greaves of the other ways to give it haste because you do want the nahab to get haste you can start utilizing it immediately um and this one also is using they have the eternal in it so you have that going for it i don't know uh, if this may have the eternal works as well in this particular deck, there might be better things again to recur. So, uh, looking over this, we can kind of get a gist of the creatures they're using, uh, taking extra attack phases seems to be like a, 
uh, just like Nahab the Eternal seems to be like another theme that is going for this card. So things like Savage Beating, which will give you another attack phase. Uh, then the Teamer Battle Rage giving a double strike seems pretty good because it'll deal combat damage twice, which means that you will uh, activate this triggered ability. Yeah. Yeah, whenever a Dread Champion deals combat damage to player Planeswalker, you may disc any discard any number of cards and draw that many cards. So yes, there will be a stacking moment uh, for the double strike to happen. So I'm assuming we're going to see a lot of trends like that. So these particular decks are running a lot of, of a lot of haste effects like Fervor and Hammer of Perforos. They're running a lot of decks that allow for multiple attack phases like the Scourge of the Throne or the Savage Beating. I think there's a lot more opportunities for these type of cards. Maybe we'll see them in other uh, deck lists. And we're seeing some of the usual suspects for ram or ramping into like Ulmog and Kozlik, which seems a little bit awkward in my opinion for this particular deck because it does shuffle in. So I understand that people are going to want to go that route. Again, I, now we're getting into me theory crafting, me deck building, but like, eh, I don't really like that, that route. Who cares if I like the route? The name of the game with MG Finance, especially with Casual Commander, is if the, the more people are running these type of things, who cares uh, what you personally like. Uh, I build decks a lot differently than most people build. First of all, I have a lot of experience with deck building, so I know of cards that exist that some people might not uh, know exist. And of course, it's it's better for me to see, you know, that maybe a drive, a drive your reanimator strategy is better than shuffling your, your graveyard back in your library. However, it does set up for other cards to be cast later on if you do shuffle things back in with Kozlik. So again, we're looking at, this is very similar to how a lot of the Nahab, the Eternal decks are running with Combat Celebrant. This could be a card that might actually be lucrative to invest in again. We're having Amonkhet be... Uh, about, you know, it's it's coming up to almost two rotations now from the, the Amonkhet, where a card like this might actually be lucrative. Amonkhet wasn't the most uh, bot set of, I mean, anywhere close. It's it's pretty pitiful, actually. Our Devastation actually didn't get a second print wave. That's how, <laughs> well, I don't know if it was, it was Ravels Vixlon or, or uh, I believe it was Our Devastation to have a very, very uh, dismal. It, I know it is the least sold uh, masterpiece expedition, whatever you want to call those sets, that was by far the least sold one. So we have Kaladashi at the Revolt, Battle for Zendikar, Oath of the Gatewatch, and Amonkhet all outsold uh, Our Devastation. So if you find a Mythic from Our Devastation, it usually is going to be worth more than a Mythic, say, out of Battle for Zendikar or Mythic out of something that cons a Tarkir. So even with Amonkhet, though, you got to think that the Mythics out of Amonkhet are going to be able to hold a higher value than, again, something out of Khans of Tarkir or Theros or anything like that, even, even though that they are newer in the scope of things. So looking at this, if we saw enough decks that started using Combat Celebrant, this is a card that I kind of add to my list and start looking at the overall supply, looking at what other decks that it goes into, checking out like EDH rack and seeing where this goes into, and maybe pulling the trigger on a card like Combat Celebrant. Uh, again, we have Aggravated Assault that just got a reprint out of the uh, Explorers of Ixalan. It dumped the price, but it looks like it's going back up. So we have the CK prices. I'm pretty sure we can change this price to kind of the TCG price here and get a, a better gist of it. Uh, so we have Combat Celebrant uh, for the $2.60. Pretty cool that you can go right right here and then say $3.99. So it gives you a, kind of an idea of, of the, the discrepancy between the two. If you often see a big enough discrepancy between Card Kingdom and TCG Player, that's also another reason to start investing in the card. It means since Card Kingdom is a very algorithm-based or automated-based uh, service, when they sell cards, they they it just automates it will when they sell out of eight copies of rare then they'll restock them at a higher price whatever that be like 10 or 15 uh, percent i'm sure someone's figured it out and the exact same is the case too when card kingdom is not selling cards for every given amount of time they reduce the price of a particular card and so if you can see that the card kingdom is is out is is very very different from the tcg that means there's also a lot of movement in that uh, particular demographic because Card Kingdom by far is the place where casuals go first. They sponsored the Command Zone. They sponsored Clarion Community College. They sponsored Magic Man Sam. They sponsored a lot of these people that are are get more of the casual eyes rather than the competitive eyes. Competitive eyes are, are looking at Star City Games and Channel Fireball. They're not paying attention uh, to the Command Zone. They're not paying attention to Card Kingdom. And so you'll see a huge price discrepancy a lot of times with Card Kingdom comparatively to competitive cards uh, from like Channel Fireball, TCG Player, and all that. So Card Kingdom is the premier store for that. A lot of times their commander cards will be able to have a premium if you purchase from them. But that's also showing, since like I said, they are the automated-based, algorithmic-based uh, pricing, 
that that means these cards are actually moving through Card Kingdom, and that's why their prices continue to increase. I'll have to do an entire video sometime explaining exactly how it works and getting ahead of, of price spikes on TC Player just based on the movement of Card Kingdom. Also, when you do see a big price discrepancy between TC Player and Card Kingdom, sometimes the buy list in Card Kingdom will be very aggressive, and you can literally go buy cards from TC Player and sell cards directly to Card Kingdom, especially do store credit, rinse and repeat by buying uh, competitive cards when they're low on Card Kingdom, and then sell them on TC Player. I mean, you can do a big rinse and repeat uh, type thing between these two platforms, and it seems those to be the, the two big ones that I use the most, a TC Player, Card Kingdom, both for, for doing this, this, this kind of juggling. All right, so again, this is very, very helpful to have a website that you can just switch back and forth. Possibly in the future, Architect will even add even more uh, to the list. So uh, I'm gonna keep my eye on, on Combat Celebrant because right off the bat, that seems to be a pretty decent little... Uh, difference between $2.60 and $3.99. That's that's almost double the value. Um, you can see Shauna Flameclaw might be actually looking better. I'm not sure if Shauna uh, Flameclaw is necessarily wanted in this deck, but you do have some upsides of discarding all the cards in your hand and drawing that many cards. So again, a reanimation based deck, I think is where Nahab wants to be. Uh, Derevi is very surprising that I don't see it in this particular list because I think it would work very well. All right, so we move on to some other effects. Again, we have some sort of ramping. We have the Obsidian Battle Axe. I don't think the Obsidian Battle Axe works as well as it does in Nahab the Eternal, uh, as Nahab the Eternal really cares about dealing X amount of damage. Nahab, Dreadlord Champion, just cares about dealing A damage. But Obsidian Battle Axe does give plus two with the Trample. That could be enough. Who knows? We have Memory Jar again, which is a, a, a kind of wheel effect. I'm surprised there's not more reanimation in this particular strategy, but at least these are coming up a lot. Uh, your typical ramp strategies, uh, your typical double strike, like the Fire Shriekers. This, this one's actually something that is interesting because Fire Shrieker is starting to be Nope, I guess it's about the same on TC Player and the regular. I thought I saw some movement in there. Wheel of Fortune, Wild Guest, uh, Tormenting Voice. It does seem to be that this person is is discarding a lot of cards uh, and using a lot of untap and reattack type effects to generate a, a huge pool of mana and just continue to find what you need until you cast what you need. So again, I'd, I'd, I'd prefer a little more combat uh, or, 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 or combo synergies in this deck, but... Anyway, so there's one of them. So we can look at N Nahab Dreadlord Champion and then come back over and, and look at some other um, Nahab decks to see what we can see in similarities. All right, so here's one that is... Doesn't look... That looks like they also are working off a graveyard-based effect with like the Goblin Welder, uh, Flame Wake Phoenix, something goes to the graveyard you can get back. The... Uh, doesn't Blysteel Colossus shuffle back in? Yeah, it doesn't quite work that well. But with extra attack phases and being able to give it haste, we're starting. Yeah, we're definitely starting to see some some synergies between the two. But what has really stood out? There's an Ulmog in both decks. It looks like there was uh, Nahab the Eternal in both decks. So Nahab the Eternal might be able to spike because of Nahab Dreadlord Champion. It looks like we had the not a lot of synergies between the two. Again, and that's that's kind of what the you have to you have to go through a number of these and start looking for similarities. And maybe this one's not as good. Reckless Worm, that's a that's a cool one with madness. Madness effects with Nahab actually look pretty pretty decent. But I'm not seeing a lot of synergies between the two. This one also doesn't seem to be running a lot of yes, it does. So that's the big synergy is this deck these Nahab decks are uh, so far out of the two have both been using take extra attack uh, effects. So uh, for what that's worth. Uh, let's go on to another one. So here we go to the Nahab Artifice. So this one's probably the one I'm going to like the most because if it does run the Planeswalker of Derevi, what? Okay. And it needs to be, but it does seem that this one is running swords, a lot of equipments. Uh, let's see if there was a Champion's Helm. A lot of equipments in this one. Aggravated Assault again. Um, let's see. We have... This is an interesting one with In the Web of War. If this was one that was showing up a lot in lists, this is something with very low supply. When a, a creature enters the battlefield under your control, gets plus two, plus your own haste until end of turn, uh, which is you know pretty good to put on a com commander that does want to uh, come in with haste, which Nahab does. Uh, we have Reforge the Souls, which is kind of a wheel effect. We have the uh, uh, more of these take extra attack phases. So Seize the Day, Relentless Assault have been in all three so far. There's cards even like Fury of the Horde. 
Uh, there are, yeah, a lot of those particular cards. Now we have Goblin Welder in two of the decks. We have Anger in two of the decks, possibly three of the decks. I wasn't uh, watching them all. I think Savage Beating was in all three of the decks as well. So there's another synergy. I think Chaos Warp was, but that's just a staple of many. Let's go back and find another Nahab deck. So we go over to New Nahab. Uh, we have Savage Beating. This is four for four. So you're see, so you starting to see the rhythm you get into where these are the cards that have gone in 100% of the decks. EDH Rec does do a good job of, of p compiling those all together. But again, it's good to have a laid out form of looking at these. We see a lot of wheel effects in most of these decks. There's This one has Combustible Gear Hulk, which also acts as a wheel effect. Um, this one is still no... I'm, I'm surprised we still haven't seen a Derevi in this but we have another kind of wheel effect with jaya ballard ballard uh we have the anger again in this one we have the steward i think is pretty good with commander it doesn't synergize as well with the other nahab since they're both four drops uh we have the i guess anger anger is definitely one you want to look at because this i think has his incredible synergy between nahab dreadlord champion and anger because even if if you if you're able to throw it in with your commander any any card that synergizes directly with your commander i think is a must include and then your anger gives all the other creatures later on the ability to attack in this one doesn't see like it's the biggest heavy on the creatures though uh crucible of worlds that's another one i think that will have a lot of synergy between the decks i think it's been at least in two of them we've got the obsidian battle axe showing up in quite a few of them and that's mainly because Nahab is a warrior, and it does have the nice little synergy with it. So there's a goodie. Um, this one's kind of low supply and uh, low price. So we can, we'll can we we'll hop over here and see if there is movement for Card Kingdom. So we go and come over here. Obscene Battle Axe doesn't look like there's any movement with, with Card Kingdom, but this one does. I wonder if this is printed again in some sort of commander set. That's something you'd have to check later on. But now we go over to Relentless Assault and Seize the Day. Both of these are in here again. World at War. This one's in here again. So there is that with this Nahab. We'll go new new Nahab. And you can kind of look at their names too if they've <laughs> if they've I guess this is new new Nahab. There's this is the third Nahab that has been printed. So we'll click on new new Nahab and look at some of these cards. And so we have the uh this one is the first one. It looks like that I haven't seen any sort of Yup, oh, seize the day again. There's the one that's been in every deck. We have Chandra Flame Collar. This is the second one it's in. Finally, a Duretti Scrap Savant. This is exactly how I'd build this deck, by the way, if people are actually looking to deck build. It'd be a lot of these Meteor Golem type effects, like Recurring Meteor Golem, uh, Karatha Forge Master. Yeah, this is absolutely the way I'd build this deck. Psychosis Crawler. That's a big one. Why in the world isn't Psychosis Crawler? This is a perfect synergy with Nahab Dreadler Champion. So again, once you start to get established too and you start to see what actually works, maybe the trends are a little bit behind where... Uh, people actually will start to adopt these type of cards. So I think that pretty much like the the uh, uh, the Scrap Crawler is actually pretty good too. But pretty much the Psychosis Crawlers is a shoe in for a deck that wants to draw a lot of cards to punish your opponents every time you draw cards. But yeah, I like the, I like this particular deck with the duplicate. I think it's pretty smart. Uh, this does have some some extra combats, which is now every deck we've looked at. So all of those decks are the big synergies. And it looks like that now that's all the ones that have been listed so far. So let's just come over here and let's just kind of check out some of those. What's one that had a lot of, of those type of effects in here? I think this one had a lot of those type of effects. So let's come over here and just kind of look at the, the prices. Let's look at Nahab Eternal and see what Nahab Eternal is doing. That seemed like it was almost in every deck because they do synergize. So this should show you if there's enough movement for the card. Nahab Eternal doesn't look like it's been spiking up in price but there is a price discrepancy between card kingdom uh if we come over here to card kingdom they have plenty in stock they're out of stock on the lower ones uh but if we sell our nahab the eternal it looks like they're paying four dollars and 55 cents so there's a, a a prime spec target if you do have any sort of uh faith in the new nahab the if it will be adopted, I believe we saw Nahab in, in almost all, if not all, of the decks. And so if this is going to be an adopted commander and all the commander decks are going to be in Nahab, you got to think this is going to be the second most popular one. That This will probably have a significant price spike. And you could already see that the buy list versus the TC market price is razor thin. So I'd come over here and i definitely put Nahab the Eternal on a card that is something that you should be either soft specking in on 
or I wouldn't even fault you at this point with this information to go a little bit, little bit heavier on the Nahab. Now, what is a soft spec? Soft specs when I buy like four, eight, 12 of a card. It's not a, a huge investment where I, I know this card will probably go up in, in the long term, but there might be better places to park your money. And in this case, that's what a soft spec is. It's one of those things I do like a lot of soft specs because there's a lot of targets that you want to diversify. If you go all in on one card and that one card does not hit, then you've lost out a lot of potential growth. And again, soft spec is a lot easier to sell the cards. It's hard to find. There will be times like Arclight Phoenix where you can sell all 400 of your spec cards quite easily back to a vendor. And it's a, a, a very simple, painless transaction. There's other times too that you want to really diversify and and be able to sell a few copies here and there as uh, as as the opportunity permits. So let's look at some other ones. I think there was Seize the Day. This one might give us a little bit of a conflicting because this one was a feather spec. So it looks like Seize the Day has been absolutely taking off. Um, the buy list price for Card Keenan is probably behind here before Goldfish updates it. Uh, it looks like uh, they they actually do have that one's that one's very interesting now. So the Seas of the Day can actually be purchased from Card Kingdom at $3. So this is one that I'd like to... So this is why I like to store credit too with Card Kingdom because a lot of times they lag behind on other stuff. So for example, Ultimate Masters is something that is a lot cheaper from Card Kingdom than it is from TC Player at the moment. It seems like that they must have opened up a ton of Ultimate Masters. And then again, since they're algorithm-based, they're, they're automated-based it pushed the prices down of Ultimate Masters because no one was buying them. And now we have to the point where Seize the Day is a lot less expensive on Card Kingdom than it is directly from TCG Player. So this is an interesting little one here because I think that Seize the Day would have been an amazing spec right here, uh, uh, would have been an amazing spec right here if we would have identified it as the Double Dipper. I love the Double Dippers when both commanders out of the new set want it. And this is definitely a, a, a card that both the commanders want. Uh, let's see some of these other ones. What were they called? We have, we had one that had really, really low supply. Uh, World at War has some pretty low supply. It does look like it's it's having that trajectory I like anyway. So this could be the one that sets this card on fire. Uh, as it, yeah, this one synergies a lot better with this Nahab than it does with the, the last Nahab because this one doesn't happen until after the the first. You have to you have to cast it before. Uh, you have the mana available. And I know I didn't like World at War with another name, but anyway, that's a story of another day if I ever do an Ahab deck tech. Uh, but anyway, World at War is going to be a, a good synergistic card with Nahab. And this could be, again, the card that just makes this, this go crazy because it looks like it was already being outstretched anyway, just from the regular demand of other commanders. I'm sure this goes in, uh, what's the angel deck? The, the, uh, Mardu angel uh, Kali the Vast. I'm sure Kali the Vast decks run World at War. I'm sure plenty of other decks in Commander run this card. And it's this that natural um, outstretching of this. But this could be the card that actually lights this card on fire. And it just goes crazy. So if we come over here too, we looked at Seize the Day, World at War. There's a couple other ones that I wanted to check real quick with the uh, take extra attack phases. Let's go back over to one of these other ones. I think it was the this one had some with the Savage Beating. So Savage Beating is another one with very low supply. Savage Beatings we have from Darksteel. And it actually seems pretty flatlined. So this one might be a card that is absolutely poised to have a double up. Uh, card Kingdom is, is a good $3 above the TCG market price at $9.99. We can come over here and check their stock. It looks like they do have plenty of stock available. Uh, it does look like that they have a decent, aggre uh, it's not very aggressive on their buy list of paying half. Usually that means they're not really looking for uh, copies of this card. That probably means that they have, and only uh, wanting 30 of them also is, is quite low. Uh, the foil multiplier is quite low as well. So those are all indications that there isn't a lot of demand. There haven't been a lot of Savage Beatings sold. So actually, sometimes this is the best time for these type of cards, though, uh, because that means that this price has been static for quite some time, which means it's just due for that card to go up in value. So this would be one that would be risky but could have a potentially high payoff. With the extremely low supply of, of Dark Steel. this is absolutely something that you and it works it actually savage beatings has a, a, a it works with the entwine as something that nahab wants both of these so giving an extra additional attack phase and double strike is pretty good with nahab so i actually do like savage beating this is a card that would be 
on my list of targets that I would uh, invest in. Again, I don't know if I'm going to be investing in Nahab. I've already put a lot of investment in Feather. I think I'm over my allotment for investments for the month, of course. Uh, but this is definitely a card that I'd look at and and try to to gauge the how much how many decks of Nahab are going to be built, how many Savage Beatings are in the supply. Again, you can come over to TCG Play, uh, Player Market Price. A good thing you can do on TCG Player is come over here and first of all, you want to get rid of the the moderately played and heavy played and just go lightly played near mint. And you can look at the, see if there's more. It seems like there's quite a few pages, of course. Uh, increase this to 50. Come over here and looks like there is two pages at least of the one ofs, but you can click on this four of and see if it gives you a different picture. Now this is giving me a, a, a vastly different picture. There's not a lot of vendors that have a lot of cards. And look, look at this too. Can you notice how all the prices are in that general $8? So after you include shipping, if you're going to buy from most of these places, you're going to be that $750 to $8 range of what you're going to pay for this card. And then there's none above that. So this is one of those cards that could just absolutely go nuts. And when it's re-put on with the uh, new supply of people that actually buy out this card, it could easily be $20 is what they put it for. So this, this is actually very positive on the supply end of things. It did seem like, according to... Looking at Card Kingdom, this hasn't been a big mover. If it had been a big mover, you'd see a bigger discrepancy between the buy list and especially the foil list. Uh, but as is, this is still a quite low supply. And so if this is showing up enough of the Nahab decks, this is absolutely a good spec target. Uh, let's look at a few others here with the Combat Celebrant. Let's 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 close it off with the Combat Celebrant. And I think we're getting pretty long with this video. Uh, we'll go, combat Celebrant is a card that does look like it is having a pretty good... Our recovery of when it bottoms out. Of course, this is where it made the Travis Wu deck, and then it went down all the way, uh, bottomed about $2.35, since gone back up to $2.68. Card Kingdom again is actually paying quite reasonably, reasonable for it, $1.50, so it's less than half of what they're having. It seems like they have plenty available. Uh, let's check how many they want to buy. They are pretty bullish on this card, though. You see a Savage Bean, they only want 30. They want about 74 of this particular card. So again, this isn't a bad uh, card if you do think this is going to be put in it, it probably could allow can allow for some infinite combos Com so combat so the combo combo is combat celebrant with either one of the nahabs and then the aggressive aggravated assault so it doesn't look like this yes this one's using aggravated assault so as long as you can generate five mana you just continue to attack indefinitely with combat celebrant so Works better if they have the Eternal, but it also will work with his Nahab Dreadhorde Champion. So you might see a lot of people actually identifying that uh, combo piece. What's cool about Nahab Dreadlord is it does allow you to dig for these combo pieces very, very well. So that's another one I'd look at. It's it's definitely interesting enough for this deck. And we'll look at one last, one last more. The Relentless Assault. This one seems like a good one because this one actually is a very, very inexpensive card, I believe, because it's been printed a lot. So let's look at it. Relentless Assault. And it doesn't look like it's going that great look at some of these other ones from like seventh edition yeah there's a lot of supply dual dual deck merfolk versus goblins wasn't too long ago but that is actually interesting that the lowest value one has increased pretty decently from 50 cents to 70 cents the market price is actually above the mid that's another metric you're going to be looking at if the market price is above the mid that means this card is actually these are these are stubborn cards that are only one of that you can't actually complete carts with uh, with TCG Player until they roll out the new where you can actually complete the cart and pay $2 minimum shipping for these under $2 packages. Uh, and then that will make some of these move, especially if a card becomes above uh, about $2.75, then it makes sense to buy the one of 65 cent copy and pay $2 shipping for it. But anyway, uh, again, that'll be a video for another day. Card Kingdom does have plenty in stock. It appears that they, eh, they're buying a decent amount of the Relentless Assaults here. Uh, they have them for 79 cents. They, if we look, click on other ones, they don't really have the greatest supply in most of these other cards, though. They do in the ninth edition one, a couple of one-ofs, another one they do in the, the, the Visions. So there is a lot of supply of this card, so this one might be one that I avoid just because of the recent reprinting. But it also has the highest potential of really going up uh, due to the... Um, and if there are ways to manipulate it this back in, like I said, the shuffle effects from like the Coles looks and stuff, that might be the, the whole reason they're running them. Because then if you can get your deck... Uh, down low enough that means indefinitely you can just keep finding like relentless Assault, assaults over and over if you ditch Kozluk look and ulamog shuffle back in relentless assault uh with the nahab attack 
discard a bunch of cards to then draw that card. So if you go back over to the Nahab, you can draw, you can discard as many cards uh, as you want. So if you're if you start to get above somehow you've drawn excess cards, uh, you can then keep doing 10 or 12 cards uh, per. Uh, and then you can dig that far to find Relentless Assault again. You'll be adding that type of mana and rinse and repeat. So it's another card I think does definitely deserve to be in here. So anyway, that's kind of where I'm going with this, the, with how I do. I hope it gives you a good rundown of how I speculate. Uh, sorry for the delay. It's not Market Monday. It's Market Wednesday. But nonetheless, I think this is a pretty good uh, food for thought on in the mind of speculation. Once again, I haven't left Magic. I'll get back to be doing the brews uh, soon-ish, ish. Uh, we will be, I've been really working hard on investing in some infrastructure and a place for me to actually sell cards to uh, get more infrastructure <laughs> and then eventually we'll be back to that. But I hope you're enjoying these market uh, type videos because this is really my interest in magic. It's, it's fine. Like, it's, 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 it's a way for me to still game and still adult at the same time. So it's a way for me to actually, you know, make money on my hobby. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I've always enjoyed this sort of thing. Um, whether it be any other game that I've played in the past, I've always enjoyed the market aspect of those games. And so I hope you also find these decks kind of interesting. You no, know, it's called Rogue Deck Builder. I do have a market channel called the Market or the Rogue Market, which I highly suggest you, su you subscribe to. And, and last but not least, I highly, 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 highly recommend that you check out our Patreon just for the Discord alone. I think it's very much worth it. Uh, patrons also get huge discounts on card singles. They get huge discounts on actually sealed product at distributor cost. All these things are good perks uh, in and of themselves. But being able to communicate with other like-minded people, I think is well worth your subscription. So go check that out at Patreon. If you're not a fan of Patreon, we got Subscribestar. If you're not a friend of Subscribestar, we got just uh, ways that we can we can actually get you through automatic payments, payments other ways. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. This is Kevin with the Rogue Deck Builder. Thanks for watching.